All right. In this video, um, we are going to continue um, with the data from the previous video, and we're going to be using Taylor's square root of time fitting method. Um, real quick, I just noticed this on the previous video. Uh, the units of C sub V should be inches squared per minute. So make sure you, you add a square. Oop, add, make sure you add a squared there. Let's see. Superscript. There we go. Inches squared per minute. So that was a correction from the very end of the last video. All right. So let's do uh, Taylor's method. Um, and again, I'm in the same sheet as before. So, um, so we're going to say uh, Taylor's method here. And uh, it's, it's worth noting that, um, you know, uh, Taylor's method does require you to operate on those time values. So it would be a little bit better to copy and paste the original data uh, down here. And what I do is I'll take the vertical dial reading data, cut it, and move it over one column. And then you can uh, insert in here you know, SQRT of time, okay? And so what you're really getting is, you know, for your units, it's really gonna be the square root of minutes. So, um, so then here we can say equals and take the time value and, you know, you can say SQRT squirt of, of the time value. And then we'll drag and drop that down and you get square root of time here. And of course you get some, some um, kind of ugly decimals. So you can kind of package this a little bit better, maybe to, you know, three or four sig figs here. And then, you know, again, you know, it's nice to format things. So here we go. Uh, so it says uh, Taylor square root of time fitting method says plot dial readings versus square root of time, okay? So um, what we're really plotting is square root of time and the vertical dial reading. So I'm going to highlight this and, of course, insert um, a scatter plot, connect the dots with straight line segments. And then here in the chart title, of course, we can say Taylor's uh, method. OK, and we'll, of course, add axis titles. So down here on the on the horizontal axis, we have SQRT squirt of time and then on the vertical axis you know we have the dial reading in inches and just keep in mind you know you can you can um, put the units here the units are also going to be sqrt of minutes okay so those are my units there and um, you know we can kind of blow this up a little bit make it bigger and format um, you know you can format your vertical axes and I'm going to set the minimum to 0 0.08 again, just so the data is spread out uh, over more of the graph. Okay. And again, uh, this is pretty much it. And, and we'll do some maybe final touch formatting um, things in a minute. So uh, here we go. Taylor's method says project, uh, draw a straight line through the initial part of the curve and project it back to the dial reading axis. So we're going to say insert. We'll go to illustrations again, and then we'll pick a straight line. And um, this data is, is pretty formatted conveniently for us already. Um, and we have uh, this pretty much already projecting back to the dial reading axis which we have time zero, so we already have that point of interest anyway, but, uh, but there it is following the procedure. And, um, and so R naught corresponds with, with uh, that initial time value. So we, we actually have R naught uh, already um, as 0.1534 inches, okay? And then uh, what do we do next? Well, we draw a second line from R naught with abscissas equal to 1.15 times the value from the first line. So here's here's where you gotta um, you know be cognizant of what you're doing. So I'm gonna go ahead and add minor grid lines um, in both directions. Okay, add minor grid lines. 
And then I'm going to take this first line I drew, and I'm going to just project it forward a, a bit. Okay? And so it's still looking nice. Here's R0 up here. Okay? And what I do is I take this value that's where my my first tangent line my red line is intersecting this horizontal axis and and what do we see here well if this is 2 this is probably 2.2 2.3 2.4 no 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 2.2 2.4 2.6 2.8 this is probably um, no let's see what are the gradations here it's by 0. 0.4 okay 2.0 2.4 2.8, 3.2, 3.6, So be very careful. These gradations are by 0.4. See, I even miscounted it first. So again, we'll just double check. 2.4, 2.8, 3.2, 3 3.6. So we're intersecting here about 3.4 uh, minutes or square root of minutes. So you know, how about we mark that with a circle, okay? We'll maybe make it make it red. So, so that's about, you know, 3.4, okay? So I'm just going to call this distance D from the origin to that red dot. I'm going to call that D, and I'm going to say that that's equal to 3.4. And remember, it is carrying units of square root of SQRT, square root of minutes here, okay? And then um, we want to, uh, you know, essentially you're multiplying all the values on, on the horizontal axis, all the abscissas, by 1.15. So here's the convenient way of handling that. You say 1.15D equals... And then you say this equals 1.15 multiplied by that 3.4 value you just got, okay? And you get 3.91, and again, you still have values of squirt or square root of minutes. So 3.91, that's going to give us um, a, a point or a, a good starting point of about right here, okay? So it's just, just a smidgen you know, to the left of the 4.0. So let's give that one its own color. Maybe we'll make that a light blue. And um, then what we do is we connect another straight line from that point back to R0, okay? And so, again, that's, that's effectively multiplying um, everything on this red line by a value of 1.15, and it's giving it an intersection point down here of 3.91. So we'll say, um, you know, insert a, another shape and it's a, you know, it's another line and we can intersect this back here and put it through right here. Okay. So uh, that's already the corresponding color. All right. And so then it says um, where this line intersects the curve of data points defines R90 and square root of T90. So we have this intersection point right around here, so we can say insert, and uh, I like inserting shapes here, so we'll maybe hit, remember shift will keep, shift is kind of like engaging a snap of some sort. So uh, we'll hit shift and drag it to the left, and that'll keep it um, horizontal. And then we'll do the same thing, we'll hit shift and drag it down, drag the arrow down, and that'll keep it vertical. And I'm just going to color coordinate here. And um, this defines R, R90 is here, and square root of T90 is down here. So um, let's go ahead and say, you know, R90 in inches. And then SQRT of T90. And, um, you know, just for formatting's sake, we'll subscript these. Okay. And 
then uh, let's read these off. R90 would be about point one o two four six eight ten. Yeah, point one o two zero point one o two is is R90. Okay, and then square root of T90 is this value down here. So that's 2.4, 2.8, probably 2.7, you know, 2.7 roughly. And again, some of this is a little subjective because you're, you are eyeballing it. And then the next thing you need is, um, you know, of course, square root of T90 still has units of square root of minutes. And so what you really need is T90, right? So we can... We can say T90 is that 2.7 value, square root of T90 squared, and you get 7.29 is T90. And this, of course, has units of minutes, okay? And um, then finally, we can calculate a C sub V factor in uh, inches squared per minute. Watch those units there. Uh, you know, I made a mistake on the previous um, for Casagrande's method. So... Just superscript that and subscript this. And so uh, CV is going to equal um, T90, which is 0.8, capital T90, 0.848. Ooh. 0.848, there we go. Multiplied by um, HDR squared. HDR was calculated way at the top. HDR squared, and then we divide that by little t90, which was 7.29 that we just calculated here, and there we go. We get 0 0.0268 um, inches squared per minute as our CV factor. Now, um, in a perfect world, ideally, you should get the exact same number for CV as uh, for Casa Grande's method as you do with Taylor's method. So let's see <coughs> how this compares with Casa Grande's method up top. We got 0 0.0283 versus 0 0.0268. So we would need to note Note that ideally um, we will obtain the same CV value no matter if we use Casa Grande's method or Taylor's method, okay? Ideally, you get the same thing. Now, you know, because these are, these have, uh, they're subjective by nature, you know, it has to do with you reading, um, you know, data plots, some of them, you know, one's on a log scale, um, you know, you may not get the exact same thing, but it should be pretty close. It should be pretty close. I mean, you know, it should be within five or 10% of each other for sure, uh, or, or less than that if you're doing it correctly. So, um, you know, you also want to format things properly. Uh, I was I was pretty loose on my formatting here, so you know we can change this to Times New Roman, 12 point font, and um, you know notice this is in a gray scale. You can change it to black. Um, same thing here. Change this plot to from earlier Times New Roman, 12 point font. Another thing to keep in mind: look what happened here. Okay, um, the shapes that you input on here. Uh, if you're not careful, they're not actually going to be attached to the graph. So if you move things around, uh, it's they may not get carried with your plot when you move things around. So I would be very careful about that. Once you start putting shapes down, um, if I were you, I would uh, I would maybe stick with um, stick with the spot that you placed your graph. If you recall, um, you can also move chart to its own sheet, you know, and um, let's see, move chart, you say new sheet, chart one, and it'll move it, 
to its own sheet and then you can operate more freely here but these are again some of these are just you know pieces of formatting advice for you um, if you want to uh, if, if you'd like to use them but be careful with this it's easy to you know subjectively read things incorrectly or move shapes around uh, incorrectly so watch out for that okay but that pretty much concludes our our um, you know videos on these two methods